JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, 25 million US dollars cocaine seizure at Ian Fleming Airport. More than 25 million US dollars worth of cocaine was seized by the Narcotics Division at the Ian Fleming International Airport in Boscobel, St. Mary, on Thursday. On Friday, the 23rd of September, 2022, a joint operation was conducted at the Ian Fleming's International Airport between the hours of 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. by police officers drawn from the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, the Narcotics Division, and law enforcement agents from the United States of America. The objective of this operation was to intercept and seize cocaine destined for Canada. During the operation, a total of 500.2 kilos of cocaine or 1,100.5 pounds was seized and taken to a police facility for processing. The value of the cocaine is estimated to be over 25 million US dollars. No one was arrested. However, investigation continues in the matter. Three legal guns seized 24 hours into Operation Relentless Tool. The St. Catherine South Police say they have seized three legal guns and several rounds of ammunition in separate operations across the division within the first 24 hours of Operation Relentless Tool. In the first operation, which took place about 10.48 a.m. on Friday, a police team comprising members of the Specialized Operations Branch conducted snap raids in sections of Christian Gardens, where they seized a .45 semi-automatic pistol with a magazine containing seven rounds. Nine men were detained for questioning during the operation. In the second operation, in the 3 East area of Greater Portmore, a police team conducted a targeted operation about 8.40 p.m. One man was accosted, searched, and a 9mm pistol with a magazine containing three rounds taken from him. Two other men were also arrested for other offenses. A third operation, conducted about 11.30 p.m., in the vicinity of the Hellshire Roundabout in Portmore, St. Catherine, he yielded a Glock .40 pistol with an extended magazine containing 13 rounds of ammunition. The police say a quick response team targeted the motorcycle with two men after they were signaled to stop but refused and sped off. The team gave chase and the pillion fell off the motorcycle. A bag he was carrying also fell. The driver continued and the pillion made its escape in the area, leaving the bag behind. It was searched and the weapon found. The seizures came hours after Operation Relentless 2 was launched by the police and command, targeting guns, gunmen and gangs across the island. In support of this initiative, the St. Catherine South Police has ramped up operational activities across the division with increased daily deployment in hotspot communities. Since the start of the year, the St. Catherine South Police seized 53 legal guns, eight more than the corresponding period last year. Commanding officer for the division, Senior Superintendent of Police Christopher Phillips, commended his team for their effort and was also committed to an all-out assault on criminals and violence producers in the division. Bus conductor shot dead in Hanover. A bus conductor was shot and killed in a during attack on a bus that sent desperate passengers jumping through windows in Hopewell, Hanover on Friday evening. The incident happened around 7.45 p.m in the vicinity of the Orchard Main Road. The police have not yet released the man's identity. It reported that the man was working on a Toyota Costa public passenger bus that was heading towards Lucy, the capital of the Western Parish. On reaching the vicinity of the Hopewell service station, a man posing as a passenger, with whom the conductor was involved in an argument for much of the journey, pulled a gun and opened fire, eyewitnesses alleged. The driver stopped the bus and passengers alighted from the vehicle. Some jumped through the windows. The wounded conductor also ran from the bus but collapsed shortly after. He was later pronounced dead. Crime Weary Residents and Mexico Smuggling Route to the U.S. Several residents in the Crescent Road area of St. Andrew were on Friday adamant that they would be heading to the United States-Mexico border after the latest explosion of violence which claimed two lives and left a third man injured. Jamaicans, like many other nationalities, have sought to the United States illegally through the very expensive and equally dangerous route. Worried that all hell is about to break loose in the community, one mother was adamant that she'll have to get her son out of the space 
and even the country at all costs. Me have a look about him passport. Me have sent him my son because I be a corruption around here. I the most blood me ever see run out of somebody in my whole life. To all them deal with one of the youth them, the frightened woman said. The community remained on edge up to late yesterday evening, with many residents fearful that acts of arson, which are commonplace during internal gang warfare, could create further havoc. Reports are that, shortly after 9 a.m. on Friday, gunmen shot and killed two men who up to this morning remained unidentified. A third man, who was reportedly going about his business, was also struck by a bullet and hospitalized in stable condition. The incident caused the top brass of the St. Andrew South Police Division, Commander Senior Superintendent Kirk Ricketts, and his deputy, Superintendent Damien Manderson, who is in charge of operations, to visit the scene along with a group of soldiers as they sought to restore a sense of normalcy. But many residents say they had had enough and are ready to head up north. I just get me I get my money together because we're on your mashup. This now stop. I wouldn't want to get caught up in it, said one woman, who said that she has been following stories of all other Jamaicans, some of whom she knew, are allowed passage into the United States through the illegal route. A policeman who overheard the conversation told the residents that the process was not as easy as it appeared and noted that some Jamaicans who have made the trek have never been seen or heard from since. Human smuggling trips reportedly cost around 300,000 Jamaican dollars per person, with an extra 200,000 Jamaican dollars per child. Data provided by Mexican immigration authorities reveal a sharp spike in travel from Jamaica over the last two years. In 2020, a total of 4,467 Jamaicans traveled to Mexico. A year later, arrivals surged by 68% to 7,509. The St. Andrew South Police Division, which led the country with overall murders in 2020 and 2021, has recorded a 16% decline in murders year on year. Up to September 17, the division recorded 104 homicides, or 20 fewer than the 124 persons killed over the corresponding period in 2021. Up to September 17, the division recorded 104 homicides, or 20 fewer than the 124 people killed over the corresponding period in 2021. Operator of illegal health facility sentenced. 51-year-old Natalie Reed, operator of the Chances Rehabilitation Center in Hanover, is to pay a fine of $150,000 or spend one month in prison at hard labor for operating a nursing home without the requisite license. Reed, who was sentenced in the Hanover Parish Court on Friday, has been given two weeks with one surety to pay the fine or end up in prison. Judge C. Barnett Plunkett handed on the sentence in the Sandy Bay Court after legal action was taken against Reed by the Hanover Health Department in April, after several months of unsuccessfully trying to get her to adhere to health requirements. The rehabilitation center has also been issued with several work and sub orders since 2020 when the facility relocated from St. James. Reed pleaded guilty to the offense in June. On Friday, Reed turned up in court with attorney at law Tamika Davis, who is also the member of parliament for Hanover Western. Davis pleaded with the court for leniency on Reed's behalf, asking the judge not to view Reed as a person who has no regard for the law, but on the contrary, one who does and loves to help people. She asked the judge to be lenient, bearing in mind that the facility which she operates is not a profit-making entity, but instead one through which she helps people in need. She has learned and no better understands that notwithstanding her hurt to help others, all the requirements of the law must be met first, Davis argued. A social inquiry report has also outlined some of Reed's attempts to improve the facility. Judge Plunkett explained that the legal recommended fine for the charge is one not exceeding $150,000. She also benefited from pleading guilty. The court has to send a message to persons who operate nursing homes that they have to do so within the confines of the law, the judge said, before imposing the sentence. Reed later said that she believed the decision was fair. I appreciate the social inquiry report. I'm very pleased. To God be the glory. We are still going to operate, but we'll have to operate under the requirements of the law, she stated. Hanover Chief Public Health Inspector, Patricia Hall Patterson was also satisfied with the judgment and said that she plans to continue working with the operator so the facility can meet the requirements to operate. We have two more nursing homes within the parish of Hanover that need to be compliant with the law as well, so we'll be working on those, she added. MP Road of Crawford blasts NWC for digging up road hours after it was paved. Member of Parliament for Manchester Central, Road of Crawford, is blasting the National Water Commission NWC over its long-standing practice 
of digging up roadways after they have been recently resurfaced. Crawford is critical of the state-owned agency as she made her contribution to the state of the constituency debate in the House of Representatives. She told her colleagues that she was left disheartened a few months ago when an NWC team dug up a section of her roadway in her constituency a couple of hours after it was paved. She is calling for better coordination between the NWC and the National Works Agency, which has responsibility for the country's main road network. Crawford told the House that she has accepted that there will always be challenges, but there are some man-made hurdles that can be removed or systems can be implemented to allow for greater effectiveness. Consequently, permit me to call upon the National Works Agency and the National Water Commission to enter into or enforce a memorandum of understanding to ensure that the two entities execute their duties collaboratively, Crawford stated. We have far too often borne witness to the dismantling of freshly asphalted roads to facilitate the installation or repairs of pipelines, she added, continuing the first time MP said. My heart broke a few months ago when I received photos and a phone call from an angry and frustrated constituent who saw a work team from the NWC digging in a section of the roadway less than two hours after my road fix it team had concluded road repairs. This practice must not continue. Too much of taxpayers' monies and the time are being wasted. Jamaica reports 52 new cases of COVID-19, two deaths. Jamaica on Friday reported 52 new cases of COVID-19 and two more virus-related deaths in the last 24-hour period. This brings the total number of cases recorded on the island since the start of the pandemic to 151,594 and the death toll to 3,306. The new cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 13, Westmoreland 5, St. Anne and Clarendon 1 each, St. Catherine and St. Thomas 3 each, Manchester, Trelawney and St. Mary 2 each, St. James 8 and St. Elizabeth 12. Hanover and Portland did not report any new cases of the virus. Of the newly reported cases, there were 23 females and 29 males, with ages ranging from 4 months to 90 years. The deaths recorded were a 68-year-old female from St. Catherine, whose death was previously under investigation from September 2021, and an 88-year-old male from Kingston and St. Andrew, who died in July 2022. There were 94 recoveries in the past 24 hours, bringing the total to 98,737. Currently, 62 people are hospitalized. 11 of whom are moderately ill and two severely ill, the ministry said. Jamaica's positivity rate for the latest round of testing is 8%, the ministry added. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.